Hello guys and welcome to TGM, the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and fell into the underground. We met Toriel and came to know the ruins as sort of our opening area. We solved a couple of puzzles, made a few friends, and in this episode, we're going to go ahead and continue forward and possibly meet up with Toriel again. One thing I forgot to mention in the last episode is that in the uh, console version of Undertale, you know that frog that said that if you press F4, then you'll get a full screen? Well, in the console version, obviously that's not true, so they changed it where it's a thing about how if you go into the options menu, you can change the borders that are around the game because this game is in 4x3 and some games like to have borders around those games. So if that's something that you enjoy, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and continue. There's not anything else left behind here. Let's walk through this door archway thing. Oh dear, that took longer than I thought it would. How did you get here, my child? Are you hurt? There, there. I will heal you. I should not have left you alone for so long. It was irresponsible to try to surprise you like this. Uh, well, I suppose I cannot hide it any longer. Come, small one. And we're able to go to her house here. Seeing such a cute, tidy house in the ruins gives you determination. So that text, uh, when you talk to Toriel when you first arrive here, uh, where she says, Oh, you're hurt. Let me go ahead and heal you up. Is actually different depending on how much HP you have. I think if you're fully he healed, she'll be like, Oh, you're not hurt at all. Well, still, you should be careful. And I think if you have less than 2 HP, I think it is, uh, she'll be like, I will find whoever did this and make sure they give you an apology. Do you smell that? Surprise! It is a butterscotch cinnamon pie. I thought we might celebrate your arrival. I want you to have a nice time living here, so I will hold off on snail pie for tonight. Here, I have another surprise for you. This is it. A room of your own. I hope you like it. Is something burning? Um, make yourself at home. And she runs off to deal with that. You've seen this type of plant before, but do not know its name. There's a lot of stuff to examine. I'll try to get as much dialogue as possible. Inside the drawer are flower seeds and some broken crayons. And we have a mirror. It's you! You've seen this type of plant before. Same thing as before. Room under renovations. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. Seems right here we have Toriel's room. Just a regular old bucket of snails. <laughs> it's Toriel's diary. Read the circled passage. You read the passage. Why did the skeleton want a friend? Because she was feeling bonely. The rest of the page is filled with jokes of, this, of a similar caliber. Toriel's small chair. Its name is Cheriel. <laughs> Definitely bigger than a twin-sized bed. I wonder what that means. It's an encyclopedia of subterranean plants. You open to the middle. Typha, a group of wetland flowering plants with brown oblong seed pods. Known more commonly as water sausages. Hmm. You peek inside. Scandalous. It's Toriel's sock drawer. Ah, the cactus. Truly the most sundere of plants. And so an interesting thing that changes is that now you, now that you read that book... Oh, it is a water sausage. Nice. Uh, now it's actually time to see what Toriel brought us over here for. She got us our own room. Look at these cool toys. They don't interest you at all. An empty photo frame. It's really dusty. A box of kids shoes in, in a disparity of sizes.
round a slice of butterscotch cinnamon pie. This is another healing item that we don't want to use yet. Let's head on over to the left here. There are these stairs right there, but I want to go ahead and save those for later. It's a history book. Here's a random page. Trapped behind the barrier and fearful of further human attacks, we retreated. Far, far into the earth we walked, until we reach, reached the cavern's end. This was our new home, which we named Home. As great as our king is, he is pretty lousy at names. The ends of the tools have been filled down, filed down to make them safer. The fire isn't burning hot, just pleasantly warm. You could put your hand inside. Disclaimer to everyone at home, don't do that. For some reason, there's a brand name chocolate bar in the fridge. There's some white fur stuck in the drain. Inside the cupboard are cookie cutters for gingerbread monsters. The size of the pie intimidates you too much for you to eat it. The stovetop is very clean. Toriel must use fire, fire magic instead. There's just so much in this game that makes it feel alive. You know? Just common everyday, f you know, fun facts and inconveniences that are just so fun to learn about. Up already, I see. Um, I want you to know how glad I am to have someone here. There are so many old books I want to share. I want to show you my favorite bug hunting spot. I've also prepared a curriculum for your education. This may come as a surprise to you, but I have always wanted to be a teacher. Actually, perhaps that isn't very surprising. Still, I'm glad to have you living here. Oh, did you want something? What is it? What? This... This is your home now. Um, would you like to hear about this book I am reading? It is called 72 Uses for Snails. How about it? Um, how about an exciting snail fact? Did you know that snails sometimes flip their digestive systems as they mature? Interesting. I have to do something. Stay here. And she suddenly gets up and makes her leave. Now it's time to investigate these stairs that I was talking about earlier. You wish to know how to return home, do you not? Ahead of us lies the end of the ruins. A one-way exit to the rest of the underground. I am going to destroy it. No one will ever be able to leave here again. Now be a good child and go upstairs. Every human that comes down here meets the same fate. I have seen it again and again. They come, they leave, they die. You naive child, if you leave the ruins, they, Asgore, will kill you. I am only protect protecting you. Do you understand? Go to your room. Do not try to stop me. This is your final warning. You want to leave so badly? Hmph. You are just like the others. There is only one solution to this. Prove yourself. Prove to me you are strong enough to survive. Toriel blocks the way. Our first boss fight. Attack 80, defense 80. Knows best for you. So she has fire attacks. Like, like said earlier, she uses fire magic. Toriel looks through you. Let's talk. You couldn't think of any conversation topics. Well, I'm not very good at this boss fight. Even though it's the first boss fight, sometimes I have trouble dodging all of the attacks. You tried to think of something to say again, but there's just absolutely nothing to say at a time like this. Toriel looks through you. Now, what happens if we follow her instructions? What happens if we run away? That is right. Go upstairs. Okay. 
Hera, please, wake up. You are the future of humans and monsters. So there's nothing else to do but head down there and face the fact that we have to go up against Toriel. Already? What will it take for you to learn your lesson? In order to defeat Toriel, we have to just keep clicking the spare button. Now you'll remember earlier a frogget mentioned that sometimes you'll have to click spare even if it doesn't show that they're spareable. This is one of those times. Now we just have to keep dodging these attacks or attempting to. And you can see little by little, even though they're very subtle, there are changes to her dialogue. She has more ellipses each time of this attack. <laughs> Toriel looks through you. What are you doing? Attack or run away. What are you proving this way? And we can see, even though she says she wants to fight us, she really, really doesn't. Because once we get low enough in HP, she'll purposely start missing attacks. Stop it! Stop looking at me that way! Go away! I know you want to go home, but... But please, go upstairs now. I promise I will take good care of you here. I know we do not have much, but... We can have a good life here. Why are you making this so difficult? Please, go upstairs. <laughs> Pathetic, is it not? I cannot save even a single child. No, I... I understand. You would just be unhappy trapped down here. The ruins are very small once you get used to them. It would not be right for you to grow up in a place like this. My expectations, my loneliness, my fear. For you, my child... I will put them aside. If you truly wish to leave the ruins, I will not stop you. However, when you leave, please do not come back. I hope you understand. Goodbye, my child. And so Toriel leaves us, our first real emotional moment in the game. Not like something that'll make me start crying, but you know, it really tugs on your heartstrings. Now you may think that that's the last we'll see of Toriel. However, what I want to do is I want to go back to the very beginning, where we first appeared here in the underground. Do not worry about me. Someone has to take care of these flowers.
So now we're back down here, in the basement. As we approach the exit to the ruins, we're going to be saying goodbye to this place for ever, basically. Without further ado, let's leave. Clever. Very clever. You think you're real smart, don't you? In this world, it's kill or be killed. So you were able to play by your own rules. You spared the life of, an, of a single person. <laughs> I bet you feel real great. You didn't kill anybody this time. But what will you do if you meet a relentless killer? You'll die, and you'll die, and you'll die, until you tire of trying. What will you do then? Will you kill out of frustration, or will you give up entirely on this world, and let me inherit the power to control it? I am the prince of this world's future. Don't worry, my little monarch. My plan isn't regicide. This is so much more interesting.